Okay, so reference photos are great, but um, if you have a model with quite prominent dapples like Diamond O'Leary, it's worth having a look at him, uh, mainly to see where the dapples aren't. So you'll see, notice on Diamond O'Leary that he doesn't have dapples here underneath the shoulder or back here. He generally doesn't have dapples on his back or on his stomach, also not on his face, and kind of down on the bottom of his legs, he doesn't have dapples. Now, as a general rule, this is the case for most horses. Not necessarily, have a look at your reference photo, and if, if your horse has dapples here, then go ahead and put them in, but as a general rule, this is the kind of pattern you want to follow. Um, you might also notice, I mean, I can't really show you on this camera because it's not very good, but if you have a close look at the dapples, for example on the neck, you'll see that they're quite prominent here, and then they sort of fade in, so they sort of start to vanish around here, and it's the same on the legs, they're quite prominent here, and then slowly fade out as you go down the leg, and on the back leg as well. Again, this is a good pattern to follow if you can try and do that. Um, this is just to try and make it as natural as possible. One last thing, I'd say, with dapples, and this is a mistake I did very early on. If you have a look at how close together they are, um, I'm sorry, this camera isn't very good, it doesn't focus on like small things, but you can kind of see that the, so the gap in between each of the dapples is very narrow, it's about, as thin as the point of this barbecue stick here. Now when I first started doing daffling, I put my daffles way too far apart. Uh, and I think that's a general, you know, people generally do. So as a rule, I'd say better safe than sorry, and it's better to put them too close together than too far apart. Um, because if you do accidentally merge dapples together, it doesn't matter too much, you can get away with it. Because you know, horse's hair, it's not always perfect, so that's okay. But if you put them too far apart, it'll look unnatural and wrong, so it's worth putting them too close together. Because I'm going to make my horse a dapple grey, I'm going to start off with a very simple light grey base coat. So I'm just going to take some light grey pastel and shave that into my little container. Also take some white. Basically this layer is just to get rid of some of the primer because I don't want to, with the dapples, I don't want to go straight down to the primer, I want a layer in between. So that's what this is for. So we'll mix that up and put that on the horse. Okay, so I've got my pasta, I'm just going to go ahead and dust my horse. Give it a really light dusting all over. Um, it's really not going to make that much difference, it's going to look very light, that's fine, that's what we want. It's just so that we have a nice kind of layer between the primer and the actual dappled coat. So once you finish that, go ahead and seal it. This is the sealer I use. It doesn't really matter what you use, just make sure you get some sort of um, matte, clear sealing thing. Something like this. Go ahead and spray the entire horse and wait for it to dry. Okay, so now that the sealer is dry, um, because I'm doing a dapple grey, I'm going to go ahead and do most of the shading now. Uh, if you're doing a dapple bay, for example, this is stage is a lot easier. Go ahead and just put your first base there in. So if you're doing a bay, that will be a, a sort of reddish brown or a yellowish brown. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the shading now, and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so I've gone and shaded in uh, very roughly, so you can see, uh, some grey. Now, this is very important, you must not seal this layer, do not seal this layer, because this is where our dapples are going to go. So, to do the dapples, what you can do is fill a little dish like this, with a little bit of water. And then, go ahead and take a Q-tip, and dip it in the water. And you want to make it damp, not soaking. So just damp enough. So there's a little bit of water on there, but so it's not actually that wet. And then for the round dapples, you just go ahead and kind of do a circle motion, take the dapples out. So before we start dappling on the actual horse, um, I want to show you a few things. Obviously the most common type of dapple is just the round dapple. You do kind of a round circular pattern, you get that. Obviously it doesn't work very well on paper, so, but something like that. And another common mistake is, uh, as you saw in Diamond Leary, they're very round, 
Um, but one thing people do is they tend to go in kind of lines. Like that. You don't want to do that because that, on a horse that'll look quite unnatural. If you do kind of straight lines like that. You, if you're going to do this, you want to go in more of a zigzag pattern. I hope you can see this, it's really not coming out very well in the paper. Do you want to do something more like that, which will look a lot more natural? Sort of like that, if that makes sense. And that overall will look a lot more natural than this, just going in straight lines. Now in the course of actually making this video, I've come across a, another way to do dapples, which I'm going to use for this one. And I've taken this, this is just a little bit of rubber, or a razor, depending where you're from. See, this is just a little rubber. And I've just cut off, this is a really horrible one that I've kind of messed up. I use it kind of as a pincushion here. Um, and I've just cut off the end, so I get like a little bit of a point. And I'm going to use this to actually kind of almost rub out the dapples. So let's do that. Okay, this is going to be quite hard to show, but um, when doing dapples, I always start at the back, kind of around here, and uh, kind of move forward. So I kind of go down and around. Um, so let's just do this. So I'm just going to lightly do in a kind of star shaped pattern because that's the way my reference photos like dapples are kind of star shape we're just gonna do that kind of like that so dapples are never kind of one shape or one size so go ahead and add some smaller ones here maybe around the side also kind of down here, maybe where the dapples will stop, do some smaller ones. So you want to just kind of carry on doing this throughout the whole horse. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is if you're going to do the damp q-tip technique then uh, especially if you're doing a dark horse so if you're doing like a dappled bay for example and you've got sort of undercoat dappling with loads of layers of dark pastels over the top I would really recommend doing this get some white acrylic paint and add it to your water make it very very watery because you, you basically don't want that much paint on there you just want to kind of emphasize the dapples a little bit more and uh, sort of stir in the paint and use that to do the dapples. Uh, I wouldn't do it like on a dappled grey but yeah on a bay or something it's, it's worth doing. Okay so I've gone quite far and um, remember what I said about how the dapples tended to fade out along the legs, stomach and kind of up here. One way you can do this um, you can just sort of make it stop, but I would suggest doing smaller dapples kind of here and then making them bigger as you go along. So have quite a big dapple here and then make them slowly get smaller and smaller until they're, they're just a tiny pinprick kind of here. And that's one way you can make it kind of fade out a little bit, make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, you also want smaller dapples kind of uh, back here. Put some more dapples back here, smaller dapples here and here and along here. Also on this one, there's smaller dapples up here on the back. So just kind of experiment. This is something that you just kind of have to learn where to put smaller dapples. Uh, but yeah, experiment with the size of dapples and make them sort of bigger and larger. Make them 
the biggest dapples kind of here and here. That's why you want the biggest kind of dapples. Okay, so as you can see, we're mostly finished with the dapples now. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with my sealer to kind of lock all this in. And uh, we're not done yet, but as you can see, she's sort of coming together. Okay, so I've sprayed her and uh, sealed in the pastels and hopefully you can see that the sealer generally locks in the colour a little bit makes the dapples stand out a little bit more and uh, this is pretty much all I've got to show you for the dappling tutorial I'm going to do one extra step which is completely optional uh, but it should make things look even better okay so one thing you'll know if you work with pastels is you can never get sort of the right tone the right kind of vibrancy of the colours with one coat and this is true with this girl and so of course I'm going to go over some of it, especially the dark areas with some more black to kind of try and make this darker. Uh, but of course if I go over it with pastels that would mean I sort of tone down my dapples which I don't really want to do. So of course I could, once I've sort of done this, I could take my rubber and carefully rub out all the dapples again, um, which you can do. But what I recommend is a kind of extra little bit of sort of realism or extra little effect is if you rub out just the middle of the dapple but leave a tiny sliver sort of around the edge sort of right on the outside of course this is completely impossible to sort of pick up on the camera but what that would do is mean each of the dapples will kind of fade out and it'll just give it that overall it would give it a really nice look um, some of the ones kind of down here where they fade out you can actually do even less just the tiny spot in the middle um, as I say, this is an optional step. You don't have to do this. Um, if you prefer the dapples how they look, like when they're completely rubbed out, then go ahead and sort of go over them completely. But uh, I like this effect, this kind of fade out effect with each of the dapples. So this is pretty much it for the dapple tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this girl and just show you what she looks like at the end. This is my custom, completely finished. Uh, it's funny, because I, not actually that happy with dapples on her, uh, but the technique still stands and uh, it is a technique that works and it just needs more practice, clearly I need more practice, but it is a technique that works. So I hope you can take something from this video to create your own dappled horse.